Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, you might have read recently that Spaceship Two performed its first powered flight from the White Knight Two mothership aircraft. Uh, so I decided I would make a little video to specifically look at one feature of the Spaceship Two. Now, I know everybody's doing um, planes being launched from aircraft. I've already done that before in a previous video. I should probably do it again, but really I wanted to look at a completely different aspect of Spaceship Two's flight profile. Now, as you know, Spaceship Two is basically designed to fly straight up uh, under its hybrid uh, rocket which will uh, take it up of above 100 kilometers. There'll be a few seconds or a few minutes of, of zero gravity, and then it will fall back to Earth. Now, the thing I'm going to look at, at is the feathered re-entry technology, which they're using. Now, feathered re-entry uh, is basically a trick whereby you increase the aerodynamic drag of your vehicle and you adjust the center of mass and everything so that you're going to slow down more rapidly. You're going to catch more air and therefore hopefully avoid going into the deep, deeper into the atmosphere at higher speeds. Uh, you'll put your rocket or your spacecraft into a more stable position so that you're able to maintain control of it, even although you perhaps may not have the you know, strongest aerodynamic control, especially since you're probably flying supersonic. So um, what the idea is, is you have these wings, and you see I've attached them to servo groups. In this case, if I just turn off the quantum struts and then fold them up, this is my feathering design. So... By doing this, we have moved the lift surfaces up there, which means they're a long way from the center of mass. We're going to be much more stable in this position, uh, or in this configuration, in theory. But we'll have to find out. This is a whole bunch of experiments. Now, as I said, I know we normally would launch this from an aircraft, but uh, you know that would have been a whole bunch of extra effort. Instead, I just launched it from the runway and let it fly up there. So... I'm going to put a small spin on it, and of course this is running at extra high speed. The spin was much slower. We just wanted to see whether it would self-correct, and there we go. We're really catching up. There's a bit of, there's time acceleration from me and time acceleration from the post-editing. So we're now coming down, and we're hitting about 36, 35, 30, 30 kilometers. We're probably going to start getting re-entry effects soon. And you see now that the aerodynamics are starting to kick in and it is turning it towards that, well, trying to turn those wings to the back. Uh, now, the question is, can, will it maintain control? Well, apparently, uh, I don't think it's doing too well. It's kind of turning off one way or another. Let, I should probably apply some control. There we go, bringing up the roll. We're trying to roll it so the, head, the, the cockpit is up. Another advantage of this, of course, is it means that everybody is feeling force down along their seat rather than, say, up you know, vertical or any other angle. I mean, the idea being that, you know, everybody wants to be pointed in the right direction. So anyway, yeah, now we're folding the wings back and I kind of overdo it a little and now I start messing around with it and time is running out very quickly and I push the wrong button and I start to panic and I'm going, no, no, I start to try and flip upside down and no, that didn't work too well. Okay, well, good thing I quick saved because that means I will, in fact, be able to go back and try this again. Uh, <laughs> that was actually my, my first unsuccessful attempt, can you believe? The first time I did this, it worked 100%. And I there's I was on Skype with, uh, you know, a lot of the other KSP YouTubers, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I did this first time. Didn't happen when I actually went to record the video. But anyway, yeah, so here's a second attempt. Again, coming in here. Now, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure that you assign each wing to a separate servo group. Otherwise, one will go up and one will go down. So you have to assign them to different servo groups and reverse the keys. So now I'm using the roll control to try to keep the, the cockpit more or less level. I'm just watching the artificial horizon. If we go too far one way or another, I'm rolling to keep it in position. Also note there's an extra set of um, an extra set of quantum struts on the underside of those wings that we activate when we are in the, the vertical mode. 
You see that? You can just about make them out holding the wings steady. Without that, you will get a lot of fluttering in those wings. And you see they're fluttering right now uh, as I'm moving them. But I've put them down. I hold the zero button to hopefully lock them to the zero position. And I guess I'll enable and re-enable the struts a couple of times to try and get it in a reasonable position. It does actually stay folded up, but actually that makes it fly a little better, especially for landing. So it's just a case of bringing this thing down to a safe landing on the in in amongst these hills. Well, that could be a harder problem than uh, <laughs> I had anticipated. Thankfully, it does have a large wing area, and without all the fuel, uh, with the with the fuselage essentially having no fuel, we have a lot of control here. We are able to actually fly at relatively low velocities. I think it'll you know. The landing speed on this thing approaches 50 meters per second, so I make a really nice little turn and I'm just trying to aim to get down towards there without descending too quickly. The real Spaceship One has a much smaller wing to uh, fu fuselage ratio, or I don't know what the magic term is, but the wings are smaller. I pretty much had to go with parts that would let me fit the hinges. It all pretty much hinged on the hinge. Ha 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 ha. Yes, uh, which means that the wing surfaces all come from the B9 aerospace pack, as does the cockpit. And practically everything in this is from the B9, except for the engine, the wheels, and the little wingtips, and of course the quantum struts, and the the hinge from the Anated Robotics pack. There, look, I landed it, and shredded off a wing. But otherwise, that was a landing, you know, um, it clearly wasn't fast enough. So uh, let's see if I can do this properly one more time. Once again, setting up some roll on this because we want to have the thing, you know, in a semi, you know, out of control state. We want to verify that we can recover. And once we start hitting the atmosphere, I start hitting the roll keys. I do have um, the avionics system on this and it actually works spectacularly well in this, this case. I mean, this vehicle actually flies really well when you hold them in the horizontal position. I don't know about takeoff, but, you know, it, and of course it does have a rocket engine rather than a you know, jet engines, but it's actually one of the better planes I've, des I've designed in terms of flight characteristics. Look at that, just holding it manually in position, it works just fine. So once we get slow enough and, you know, there's a balance here. If you come down vertical, you are gonna run out off um, air before you run out of velocity. You're gonna hit the ground going very quickly. But uh, if you're going, you know, at a somewhat shallow angle, it gives you enough time to, you know, flatten these things out. And there we are, that's, that's a pretty good one. Unfortunately, uh, we are still in amongst the, the hills. It's the same saved game, so we're still coming down in the same area. But I think I can land this. I, I got pretty close last time and I just, you know, if it wasn't for that darned hill, I would have landed that with both wings attached and I wouldn't have lost my no claims bonus. Now this time we're just going to be a little more careful here. Also, pro tip, if you have the undercarriage, turning on the lights is actually a very helpful thing when you're landing, even in daylight. It'll give you a much better sense of how close the, the ground is, assuming you aren't using, you aren't flying it from inside the cockpit. And as pretty as the cockpit is, I'm not going to try flying from inside of it because it has almost no visibility and it's much better to kind of view this thing from outside. Yeah, I mean, with this amount of wing surface, it's one of those ones where, where I guess you could almost get an Infiniglider. glider. I, I don't honestly know for sure, but it does appear that it's, it's kind of hard to make it go down carefully. It's a, a lot of just coaxing it downwards. If you do too much, it will end up gaining altitude. But I'm um, getting kind of close. Uh, I wonder actually what the ground altitude here is. It looks like I'm 1.3 kilometers up, so I wouldn't be surprised if I land and I'm still above one kilometer above sea level. There, two, 1,200 meters. You can see the light now on the surface, right? The light, very helpful just as a general gauge of how close you are. And, uh, you know, if you can't see a shadow, say at night, then it will definitely make a big difference. Okay, 1150 meters. I think I might be more than one kilometer up when I land. But it just appears to be hanging there. It takes a really long time. You, the, the undercarriage is very close into the body in this case. But I think I can do it. 
Come on. Oh, uh, with those giant wings in the tiny undercarriage and the hilly terrain, it's no surprise that I managed to lost one wi lose one wing. What is surprising was that I didn't lose the rest of the aircraft, huh? And let me see. Uh, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, 999. Nine, nine. I guess I'm going to be just under one kilometer up. Well, so much for that. But regardless, look, that was a successful return. And since they're safely back, those those uh, Kerbals were skeptical to start with, but now they are happy to call this aircraft old floppy wings. Anyway, one thing to realize is that the feather configuration, although it was designed for re-entry, it can work at any position in flight if you happen to be spinning out of control, as I'm trying my best to do here. There we go, we get a bit of a yaw spin on that. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty out of control. Okay, that is as out of control as I'm going to get. So, it's still possible to use it as a recovery tool. And in fact, this has been used by the Spaceship 2 crew um, to, to deal with one particular control loss situation, apparently. They feathered it up, and then they fold, once it stabilizes, they fold the wings back down, and they are flying again, once like, uh, like a plane. Of course, uh, it still have to land all this. But yeah, that is my take on the feathered wings technology of Spaceship 2. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.